Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video. I'm actually sort of lip syncing here. This is one of my videos from uh, several years ago where I played the very first video game, Tennis for Two. This was at a uh, Seattle pinball event. They had Tennis for Two set up. It was really cool to try it out on an original oscilloscope. Um, this has been kind of a holy grail for me to be able to play this thing and to get that opportunity five years ago was really, really awesome. So happy I got that chance. I think you would need quite a bit. There was a Raspberry Pi set up with some controllers. Um, it's not something you can just uh, go and uh, find easily, but it was pretty, pretty cool to experience it. However, you can now all experience it yourself thanks to a posting I discovered here on Atari Age, where I'm a member. Uh, a fella called Mr. Brow has actually made playable versions of a whole bunch of these early arcade games, like the earliest video games ever, including, as you can see, Tennis for Two. So I'm going to put a link below to all of these, but I wanted to try some of them out because I'm very curious to see how is emulation, is it enjoyable to play, etc. So let's just go over to his Tennis for Two retro game deconstruction zone so he's got it here now he goes into a lot of details um i think possibly how the different controls work oh okay you got um you got a two-player mode oh you've also got just uses the keyboard okay well we'll come back to that history of tennis for two uh talking about uh, willie higginbotham and all that kind of good stuff and even shows a little animated GIF here of what the original machine looked like. This is something that uh, somebody had built. I've seen this footage around for quite a few years, and it was neat to be able to see that in the real, in the flesh, as it were. But now we can actually try it out on our browser. So uh, let me just see here. Um, for playing against the CPU, click on the dial on the left-hand controller. The dial uses the angle of the ball when hit. Once clicked, the dial can be rotated by moving the mouse to the left or right. When you're ready, press the S key on the keyboard. Okay, so let's give this a whirl. So let's scroll up and just center my view nicely. Okay, so that, let's see. He said you can, do I have to, can I not drag? Oh, maybe it's, that. Okay, I don't really know, but uh, let's hit S. And S again. Ooh! <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what does this button do then? That's also S. Where are the paddles? Hmm. Okay, hang on a sec, hang on a sec. That is pretty cool, though. That motion does look like an oscilloscope. Like you can see there, and then the CPU... Let me just, hey buddy, hold on a second. Let me just get, can I turn this? Oh, there we go. Okay, wow, this is, oh, okay. You don't want to turn it like a dial. I got it now. You don't want to turn it round and round. You want to click and hold and press your mouse left and right. So like that type of thing. Okay, <laughs> let's, uh, you know what? I'm just going to hit the S. I could push the button, but I'm going to hit the letter S. Okay. Oh, It would be nice if I could see the paddle, but you know what? That's probably like the original hardware. Okay, let's try it again. Fascinating, mm, man, fascinating to play. Can you imagine this like in the 50s, seeing something like this? This is really cool. How do you, how do you actually re return a volley though? Or is it strictly Hmm. Is it strictly you fire it and it just goes across? Maybe that's it. Maybe there is no... See, I didn't really get a good chance to play it. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, but he can return it. Hang on a tick. How do I return the shot? Once click the dial can be rotated. That we know. When you're ready, press that. You can hit the ball again as soon as it crosses over to your left side of the net, continuing to use the mouse to aim and S to hit. Ah, uh, that's why it's not working. Okay, let's do it again. So I need to keep my finger on S. All right, ready? Let's get this. Okay, so we got our, we got our let's just uh, 
get myself nicely centered. Oh, okay, this will work. Okay, so S. S. There we go. I'm playing tennis for two. <laughs> so I guess there's no ball per se. There we go. That would be a win. <laughs> or sorry, not the ball. There's no paddle per se. You're just hitting the ball. Oh, man. Like you've got a ghost paddle. Man, oh, man. Okay, let's try this again. Really high. And then again. So I think as long as you... Yeah, okay. That's really cool. That I like. I like that. That is a good recreation of what I think Tennis for Two must have been like. Very, very cool. And he's got others. So another one that really caught my eye here is Cathode Ray Tube Amusement Device. And you're reading that right, kids. 1947. This is something... This is allegedly the earliest video, in quotes, game ever made. In fact, I know that because if I look it up in the uh, Wikipedia reference, it talks, it goes into quite a good bit of detail. But basically, this was by many considered to be the first time. And again, it's, a, it's an amusement device. So is it really a game? Like if Tennis for Two is barely Pong, this I think is going to be more of kind of a, you can move things around on the screen. Uh, it's not generally considered a can't, here we go. Uh, it is not generally considered a candidate for the title of the first video game. It does have many people talking about it, but let's let's try that out because it's right here. Cathode Ray Amusement Device Simulator. I think it was played on World War II radar dishes or radar scopes. How the heck do you play this? To play the Cathode Ray Amusement Device, drag the planes and ships across the radar screen till they're in positions that you wish to target. When you're satisfied with your configuration, press Press the silver button on the top of the panel to start firing at them. You have 30 seconds to adjust the trajectory and blast time knobs so that the blast detonates at the de location of the targets. Ooh, so kind of like a rudimentary missile command. So if I put that guy there, and we'll put the boat here, and we'll put that there. No, let's, let's mix it up. Let's put you on the edge. Okay. Press the silver button, which is up there, and do what? When you finish, press the silver button to start firing. You have 30 seconds to adjust the trajectory and blast time. There's trajectory and blast time. I don't know. Let's just start. Let's see what we get. Weird. Oh, oh, nearly got it. Come on. Get. Now, this one is a different kind of control. How do you? There we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, you press and hold. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Oh, we got one. We got the airplane. Now, can we get the other airplane? Oh, my 30 seconds is done. Okay, let's see if we can get the red airplane. I want to change the trajectory. Blast time, I guess we want to increase so that it doesn't blow up until later. That's cool. Okay, that's obviously too far. We're not going to get the red airplane. Then let's try the boat. That's overshooting. Let's lower the blast time. Like so. Oh, not enough. Come on. Get the blast time. Oh, we died. Okay, one more go. See if we can... I want to get that boat. Can't reduce the blast time any further. What does this one do? Oh, there we go. We got the boat. <laughs> so that would have been a cathode ray tube amusement device. Hmm. So they would have been just playing around with the dots, um, probably had little cardboard cutouts of airplanes, or maybe being actual World War II equipment, they may have had little symbols to indicate boats and airplanes and that, and just randomly thought, hey, let's just set these up and use our kind of rudimentary switches and dials here and try and hit these little targets. Cathode ray amusement device. That's very cool. I quite enjoy that because being, quote unquote, the first video game, much like Tennis for Two, 
I've got a seated interest because I also actually run the uh, Computer Space Fan website, which is also considered the first video game. But there are contentions about whether or not that's true or not. So uh, just thought I'd give my channel or my my uh, my website a little bit of a plug there. If you get a chance, check it out. I talk about computer space and all of the different machines that still exist today. Um, things that you can check out have got various uh, computer space appearing in some of the media over the years. You know, it's been on radio shows and TV shows. Um, all these kinds of things, all referencing computer space. So if you get a chance, please check out my uh, website, computerspacefan.com, because that's also a contender for the first video game. Now, he also talks about Whirlwind Bouncing Ball from 1952. I've never, never heard of Whirlwind Bouncing Ball. Let's check that out here. The Whirlwind Bouncing Ball Simulator. To play this, press the red switch in the upper corner. After pressing the switch, a spot will appear to move in a straight line across the bottom of the window, showing the floor that the ball is going to bounce on. If you look carefully, you'll see a hole in the floor in the lower right corner. The goal of the game is to get the ball to fall through the hole. I guess like a reverse pong, you want the ball to be missed by the paddle. All right, let's, let's turn it on. Oh, okay. I did see a little gap here. So you want it to fall through the gap? What? So what does this do? What does reducing speed do? Oh, I'm aiming the ball to drop through that hole. Okay. Like that. Hey, I got a point. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Let's increase. I'm just clicking and holding the button to make the dial move. Okay. So there's the hole. Okay, let's see if we can make it faster speed. Will it drop in there? Nope, overshot. Let's reduce the bounce. Ah. Oh. Okay, it's got it. If I reduce the bounce even more, I wonder if that's before it launches. Yay, we got it. The Whirlwind Bouncing Ball Simulator. I've never heard of this one, and that is very, very cool. There you go. Hmm. And then the last one on this list is Midsack. Now, he's actually, this is a pool simulator. This looks pretty cool. When's, what's the year on this one? Uh, Midsack, 1954. Really? This looks pretty nice for a pre-Tennis for Two game. Midsack Pool Simulator. Okay, to play that, click on the Q direction dial in the upper left. That's on that one. Move the mouse left and right to set the angle of the pool cue. Click again when you're happy with the angle. Then click the Shoot button. Oh, so you got that? Okay, so, all right. So let's see what kind of a break we can do. So if I move... Okay. Ooh, okay, but what if I want to reposition? I guess you can't. So I'm happy with that. Uh, let's shoot. Ooh! Oh, <laughs> well, that's no good. Can we, let's recover the cue ball. How would you move the pool cue? Because i got to get the cue behind the ball. You can move the cue around the screen using the arrow keys. Oh, okay, or... Uh, clicking on the Q position control. Oh, okay. The here was me thinking that would put some English on the ball, but no, it's actually okay. Oof. All right, turn around, turn, uh, turn around, like so, and then get that there. Ooh, it's very loosey goosey. Well, let's at least get a break here. Ah, stop. Okay, so a lot of this you need to like click to kind of make it and then click again to stop. All right, and then up. That's not quite gonna do it. Okay, move the Q down there. Oops, stop, stop. Okay, let's shoot. Wow, look at that, look at that. That's a video game, man, I'm, I, yeah, that is, 
That is really amazing. Now it's, I guess you could say that's borderline a simulation of like particle physics and stuff. But aren't all pool games really pretty much that? I, I say this is a video game. Now, where do I want to go? Let's see if we can just sink one ball. Um, let's see if I can... Ooh, can I get that one into that corner? <laughs> Not likely, but let's try it. So we move the cue-ish to that direction there. Click again to stop. Rotate and click again to stop. This is totally not going to work, but yeah, that's let's see if we can even get close. Shoot. Hey, oh, 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 neither one. Oh, are we going to get the corner? Oh, I nearly went in the corner pocket. Darn it. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I got to do one more. Here we go. Let's uh, go up here. And whoa, 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 stop. Okay, rotate. I'm not even going to try and be like clever with this stuff. I'm just going to get it to at least work. Okay, shoot. I wonder if you can put any more power on it. Probably not. Shoot. Oh, nearly sunk the cue ball there. Can we get the, can we get him in the corner? Yay, we got him in the corner. <laughs> And nearly a side pocket. Oh, that is so cool. The Midsack Pool Simulator. Well, that is pretty impressive. And then there's the history of it. Wow. So the Midsack was developed in the University of Michigan in 1951 through 1953. and was capable of 25,000 calculations per second. Woo. That is impressive. That is really impressive. Well, I highly recommend you check these out, especially if you're into really retro video games. Um, I'll put a link both to this Atari Age post and all of these individual games just uh, down in the comments or down in the description below. Definitely check this out. If you want to check out some real video game history, this is cool. All right. Until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.